Alright, what's up y'all, Take a fan here. As we're actually about to tell today's video, we're here to showcase the number one meta shooting guard build in NBA 2K23 for Comp Pro-Am, but I do want to say, just because it's meta, just like every other build that we've showcased so far between, let's say, the small forwards or the power forward center, stuff like that, I don't really believe that it's the best build in the game, but I do want to showcase what everybody runs at the shooting guard position when it comes to Comp Pro-Am, and then put you guys on to what I believe will be the best shooting guard build when it comes to Comp Pro-Am, not to mention what we're going to start running for our team in these next couple of runs that we get in and we're actually going to be in the hall of fame program league very soon the next couple of uploads i might even get some gameplay of that stuff as well but i have been dealing with some internet issues unfortunately so i haven't been playing 2k quite as much as i, as I would like to but nonetheless i know a lot of the new viewers you guys don't care about this stuff right now you just want to see the build so we will get straight into that i hope you guys enjoy if you do for the drop a like stuff so you new to all noties all good stuff and like always tries from the 2000 likes so for the six foot three, the meta build that we have right here, I have a list at the shooting guard position. You could make this at a point guard if you would like to. I would suggest to make it at the two, debatably, just because of the positional situations. Now, I will say with the lower pass act at that 75, as you can see right there, if your point guard has 76 or above and you're lined up at the point guard position with this build, you will be lined up at the two every time, or at least at a taller position than them. And it is kind of nice to be at the point guard in my career grinding. So if you do a lot of like grinding of your builds in the career, instead of say, for instance, the side courts and stuff like that, or just in general rec or park, I would suggest to make it a PG for that reason. Nonetheless though, we have a six foot three with a six nine wingspan and 180 on the weight. So this is what you see for most builds when they make the shooting guard position in 2K23 for comp prime. As you can see, you got the 80 dunk, you got the silver, limitless takeoff and the quick drops all types of stuff like that it's the most functional when it comes to that style you have the 92 three-pointer with its 78 mid-range and as you can see the 24 shooting badges that allows you to run as we all know at this point i've talked about it in a lot of videos three tier threes between agent three blinders and limitless after you core one because 24 points equals 10 points spent between tier one and tier two then you have 14 left over you're able to run two tier three badges right here for 14 points then you can core the other one for free and boom there you go you can run three tier threes just like that for having 24 shooting badge points now what I want to say is so troll about these builds, as you can see, the 90 ball handle for the extra badge point, 76 speed of ball for the extra badge point. People just get the MJ dribble styles and then the 90 ball handle or at least 89 for that Hall of Fame quick first step, as you can see right there. They don't put the Hall of Fame unpluckable on shooting guard builds. It really doesn't make sense to considering you're going to run the ball a little bit at a much lower rate, I would say, than the point guard and 75 pass act is plenty fine. Now, what they like to do with these, though, is to play them on the wing defense and have 99 steel with it, as you can see. But this is what I don't like about the six foot threes. And this is why I truly do believe that six foot one that we're going to showcase in today's video is so much better. And granted, I have made videos on this in the past too. So I do apologize for my own reoccurring viewers and stuff like that, where maybe you guys have seen this regurgitated information right here. But for the new viewers, I want to put you guys on to the fact that these six threes and the meta build that people run in 2K23 for the pro-am stuff is not good. If you ask me for the shooting guard position, 90 Excel, 75 speed. We have 60 vert once again for the quick drops. And then you have the maxed out near stamina at 97 but i do agree with the principle i do like the idea of these builds guarding wing with that 99 steel in the hall of fame glove also the hall of fame interceptor it makes it a real pain for your shooting guard to get the ball and be beautiful useful with this because in general your shooting guard probably only has gold unpluckable as you can see right here and as a shooting guard right here you're actually one of the few people on the court that are guarding the other team's shooting guard so to give you the rundown on that lockdowns guard point guards point guards guard lockdowns centers sometimes guard power forwards because they're just stuck in the corner and power forwards typically guard centers because they want to be put in the pick and roll defense shooting guards are the one position on the court that actually guards each other in most situations intentionally and again that leads to generally you have that 99 steel meta right here going against the 90 ball handle or 89 ball handle for the gold unpluckable meta right here so it does make it a problem when you come out here with a 99 steel build and put it on the wing yet you can still contribute on the wing offense as a 92 three-point shot style and stuff like that too where you can be reliable for the limitless range we obviously need that for a wing spot up and then in general a secondary ball handler as well and i've seen a lot of tweets this year from the competitive pro-am community and stuff like that and they all do agree if you're not running 99 steel on your wing when it comes to pro-am for the defense you're trolling your team it's just a real detriment to your team to not run something that's an elite on ball stealing type build on the wing it makes it really tough to involve them in let's say wraps where you want to maybe get mismatches and stuff like that or just in general to feed the ball to your secondary ball handler or just in general to playing off ball lanes of the 99 steel hall of fame receptor but again i don't quite agree with the way that this build looks so i'm not going to go over the badge loadouts for this one i actually want to just showcase to you guys a six foot one then i'll talk about the badge loadout on that and i actually will have some gameplay of zeke using the exact build that i'm going to be showcasing for that six foot one and playing our shooting guard with it as well but nonetheless as you can see the takeover options you have shot sharp play and lock 
I would say this is pretty standard. If you have a little bit less defense, you probably have finishing as far as like slash takeovers instead of the lock takes. But nonetheless, this is something you will see on builds that have really high steal rating. Just makes sense. And then obviously, if you have the ball handle and three pointer, it's going to give you the shot sharp and play. Simple as that. So let's get to this six foot one right here. I really do believe this is a game changer of a build right here. I think this is a problem to play against at all levels, whether it's park, whether it's pro-am, even 1v1, I feel like this is a devious build right here. Now, mind you, it's low-key, kind of the same thing as what we just showed. But the real perk to this, as you can see, with that six foot one, is that you get a couple really like key extra ratings. And feel free to call me out on it too if there's something that's significantly lower. The only things that are lower on this build compared to the six foot three that I just showcased are the 89 ball handle instead of 90, and then the 77 mid-range instead of 78. I just didn't find them convenient to upgrade on this build. I will say though, that's because I'm probably being a little bit manipulative of the fact that you could just add an extra shooting badge and you know, stuff like that for instance. But nonetheless, let me stick to the point of what I'm trying to get at right here. It also is convenient because this badge point for 77 driving layup is actually enough for getting a badge point as you can see and not to mention we get the fearless finisher as well. Whereas as a six foot three, it's not exactly a badge point. It doesn't tie to it. So you'd have to intentionally upgrade your driving layup even higher to get say for instance, the silver acrobat that you would get at 76 and then also at 77 as you can see this fearless finisher on silver as well so nonetheless we still have 16 finishing it's going to give that limitless takeoff on silver the exact same thing we were looking for on the other build and we still have the exact same thing for the shooting again minus one shooting badge but it is what it is you could low key even take the free throw down the stamina down a little bit whatever but the thing that we have significantly higher we have five more speed and as you can see the perimeter d is at 92 as well so this makes it a legitimate perimeter defender in my opinion not to mention i mean it's going to be really key for the way that you do play defense on this. You're going to be wanting to play wing D. If you, ha if you have like super low prim D, like that 78 stuff that we just showcased with also like 75 speed, it's going to make it a problem to play defense, regardless of the fact that you have 99 steel. Yes, I do understand. You're just going to be hammering your X button as about as simple as that. And that's all you really plan to play on defense. But with this, we do still have a very elite level of defense with the gold clamps, gold challenger, hall of fame glove, and hall of fame interceptor. If we put a couple defensive badges on this build, you actually will be able to run all four tier threes at the highest level that we have right here. I'll explain that when we get into the badge loadout. But nonetheless, I know one of the big things people are gonna hate on with this build is, why would you make a six foot one with only 89 acceleration? I know, I know that's gonna be a huge rebuttal to this, but at that point, what do you guys wanna take away? I mean, we need the 76 or 75 ball handle at bare minimum for the MJ dribble style. We need the 89 ball handle for the Hall of Fame quick first step. You obviously need 92 three pointer as well to be a wing spot up with that gold limitless. I, one would debate that you definitely need the 80 dunk for the limitless takeoff and obviously the quick drops off one and stuff like that too. And obviously you can't really go that much lower on your driving layup because we do still need the finishing badges. We need to be at least at 16 to be able to get the limitless takeoff in general because it's a tier three. So. I really would love to hear where you really would think to take away from some attributes. Maybe you would think to go 89 three-pointer potentially, but I'm still not a big fan of that when it comes to pro -am. So I do know people will hate on this 100%, but at the end of the day, you can't expect to have 90 to 95 ball handle for Hall of Fame and Pluckable or 94 acceleration like a point guard would if you still plan to have 99 steel and 92 prim D. For those who aren't aware of what I'm talking about here as well, my whole point is the six foot ones get more attribute caps than a six foot three does. It's a glitched thing in the builder and a lot of people are aware of it when they make point guards, but generally you don't see people make these builds at the two. And I'm not exactly sure why. It's not like two inches of height makes all the difference as far as protecting yourself on the interior. I would argue that it doesn't even do it at all for that matter. And because you can buy yourself more attribute points, as you can see with this perimeter defense being 92 and also the speed as well, we have even more defensive badges that will once again still protect you on the wing. You're not going to be a liability when it comes to contesting shots or getting body up bumps in general, or you have more badge points to just run in general between pick dodger or anything that you find convenient as well. But again, we do not lose anything significantly in comparison from this build to the six foot three. All we lose is one ball handle, one mid range. Simple as that. that are, those are the only losses on this build in comparison to the last one that I just showcased. And at the expense of getting five more speed and like nearly what, 12 or 14 more prim D and way more defensive badges as well. So anyway, this is what I believe to be the best shooting guard build in the game. I really, really, really would love to see some of the top level people play on a build like this because I do think it's so significantly better than that six foot three stuff they'd be playing on, man. I would absolutely love to see someone like hooping on this type of a build.
Also, real quick, maybe let's say you're someone that doesn't care that much about printer defense and you want something that's a little bit more similar to the build that we just showcased. You could still go with the 86 Primdy for, as you can see, a lot of decent badges right here between the Challenger on gold, clamps on silver. You also have workhorse and ankle braces getting upgraded as well. And what that would leave you with is maybe to be able to get, let's say, for instance, that one extra mid range. You could get your acceleration all the way up to 93. I do still think you would want to remain around that 89 ball handle, though. I'm gonna be real with you, it's extremely expensive and it's only worth investing in point guards if you ask me i don't think you can truly make a lockdown type build or even just in general a 99 steel type build if you do plan to have 95 ball handle and still have good acceleration point guards would do it if they could they just can't because obviously they need to invest in the finishing shooting and playmaking as well and you don't have very much left over for defense so when you try and make an exact replica height weight wingspan point guard build yet give it 99 steel you're obviously going to have to be locking lacking in a couple offensive attributes so if you wanted to go with something that's a little bit less primdy, you could look at something like this where you have really elite acceleration and really good just in general mid-range for the extra badge point in comparison. But I'm a big fan of that 92 primdy personally. So we're going to showcase the badge loadout for this exact build that we have right here. Also, one thing I want to talk about before we get into that real quick though is that you obviously get lock take on a build like this. Now, for most shooting guards, I would recommend you probably go with that limitless range takeover because it just is in general the most easy to use, easy to involve, whether it's off ball or on ball, gets the ball in your hands a whole lot more too if you activate your takeover. But what I want to talk about for a build like this, because you're such an elite on ball defender and you're going to be playing wing D in general, if you're not playing with a pure lock, pure lock, like a six foot seven or six foot six that has like 99 steel, 97 prim, 30 crazy amount of defensive badges or anything like that, what you could do is run lock take primary and lock take boosts your acceleration when it's active. If you would like, it could be the multifaceted takeover that is going to help your offense and defense because obviously it's going to be something with prim badge drop where you get so many more pluck steals with this. You'll be dropping people's, if they even have Hall of Fame unpluckable, down to gold or for instance, a shooting guard's unpluckable from gold to silver and you have Hall of Fame glove with 99 steel and prim badge drop active in general. Obviously, this is going to be a huge, huge addition to your defense. But on top of that, too, you could even still run this for the acceleration boost on offense. And the ball could still maybe potentially run through you as well, depending on how great of an offensive build your point guard is. And if you're willing to take the ball out of his hands. So I want to at least throw this option out there to you guys. I would not recommend to run lock take secondary, though. I think in general, running sharp take gets you take over very quickly for shooting your shots. And it is just kind of nice to have in general, too, for especially if team takeover gets active. Because then at that point, you can just kind of defer to your point guard not run the ball through you yet still be very useful when it comes to your takeover being active but if you wanted to go with something different maybe limitless range primary it could be plenty reasonable all right so now here's where we talk about the badge loadouts and this is where i want to also talk about what extra badge points you would put on with these builds and it's really important too so stay very mindful of that so i want to talk first and foremost about how maybe you could make a couple revisions on this based on the badge loadouts that you need so for finishing it doesn't really quite as much matter as you can see we got gold giant slayer we got the bronze acrobat silver fields finisher and then limitless takeoff on silver if you would like to core badge anything you could probably just get bronze core post riser for like very easy what i would like though is for you to be able to run the double shooting core badge and not have any finishing i know that's very unrealistic though for a lot of the people who are watching this so just keep in mind, I will try and cater to both styles of people that are watching. If you would like to try and core badge limitless takeoff, by all means, go ahead and try. But it's a very hard thing to get for people that have it on only silver. You need to activate like tomahawks and stuff like that at a very ridiculous rate to be able to get something like this. So I would not suggest for you to really put yourself too deep into that. Post riser is very easy to core. It's just at the end of the day, you're getting a bronze badge for doing so. So it'd be very ideal if you're able to get the double shooting badge core. Because as you can see, if you're able to core badge agent three and limitless range, that would pretty much make it so we don't even have to have this shown right here and we can just act like we have agent three and then at that point you have more points for blinders you could go ahead and upgrade your green, green machine to hall of fame you could run some amped or either that run claymore or for instance maybe some clutch shooter as well volume shooter potentially on top of that too there's just a lot of options between all of these right here and it definitely is way more convenient for you be, for you to be able to get that double shooting badge core 100 but Again, wanted to maybe cater toward the people who are potentially not going to be doing so. So as you can see, you would unfortunately be in a situation like this. If you don't plan to get the double shooting badge core, I would highly advise you go, you guys go for that 78 mid range to get that 24th shooting badge point because that alone can upgrade your blinders from silver to gold. As you can see, if we drop catch and shoot or green machine at all, it is not going to let us do that because we obviously don't have enough badge points between tier one and tier two activated. Also, 
it would be kind of nice to be able to run that Hall of Fame Green Machine if you were to go with this. I'm not going to lie, you guys. I actually do believe it's kind of viable to not run Green Machine, but some people don't want to hear that. I ended up <laughs> looking at some of the comments that you guys had in the shooting badge tier list. I would like to say, first and foremost, though, for like the fifth time that we've said this in all my videos, the whole team on my squad in that Joe Wager we did did not run any Green Machine at all. The From point guard to center, and me included because I don't even shoot the ball, but <laughs> my whole team did not run any Green Machine, and that was the best I've ever seen those guys shoot in their whole life in general from ak to iq to especially apollo who was running no green machine at the shooting guard and then tonic even as well so i am a i'm of the big belief that you don't have to run green machine personally but either way it doesn't really make that much of an impact because, because we can't really upgrade blinders anyway under that circumstance nonetheless though like i said one extra shooting badge point could go a very long way and would help you get that double core badge upgrade your blinders to gold and then boom there you go you got all the badges you need and then we really want to talk about the defense in a second but we'll talk about playmaking first and foremost so the real thing that's standing out like a sore thumb right now is that you don't have hyperdrive but what i'm okay with this for the fact of is that i think hyperdrive is way more important in pro-am for bringing the ball down the court as a press breaker you're not gonna be doing that at, at a significant rate when it comes to pro-am playing shooting guard if you ask me you will run you will run into some teams that double press your point guard and force the ball into shooting guards hands but at that point you are up the court a whole lot more you're not really hugging the inbound and really like going from baseline all the way to three-point line with it you're really just catching it around closer to half court and you have a free release most times so just keep that in mind when they're forcing the ball in your hands as a shooting guard you don't need hyperdrive quite as much i think this is way more of way much more of a downhill badge a press break badge so besides hyperdrive the only thing we're really missing out on is probably some needle threader that's about it i don't really think dimer is a necess necessity to have or anything like that same with floor general and at the end of the day you'd only get them silver anyway so if you would like to really, really run hyperdrive, you could take bailout off, add a couple of extra playmaking in this. I don't advise that though. I think with this build, you're just going to have to be content with not running hyperdrive, which again, you have to make some sacrifices here and there with the playmaking on a build like this. You're not going to have 95 ball handle and a ton of playmaking badges to play with or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Same with the pass act is obviously not perfect either, but defense is where we really need to talk about defensive badge points. So Ideally, you're not going to be doing a double defense core badge or anything like that because obviously that would take away from your shooting core badge entirely, which we don't want as a shooting guard. So if you're going to go with a double core badge loadout, it's going to be double shooting to be like taking away from the finishing. So this is where we need to add a lot of the defensive badge points. If you only have four extra, I highly advise that you guys stay tuned to the end of the video right here. I will talk about what you need to change on the build if you only have four extra badges. If you are someone that hit the season the season one or season two level 39 rewards for the extra badge point though, you don't need to do any of this stuff because all you have to do is just invest all the extra defensive badge points that you can get. As you can see, if you put five extra in, you will get the Hall of Fame Interceptor to be able to run. And then boom, at that point you have the Pick Dodger and Menace. Nothing else though, as you can see, which really I don't think you're losing out on a whole lot between the tier ones. The only thing you're really missing out on for tier two would be Workhorse. I do believe this is something you can get away with not running though and really if you are fiending for running it you could just not run menace as well but again that would have to be at the gold level because we need to put the extra five points in for the interceptor all right so the only revision you would have to make on a build like this if you only have four extra badge points because that's what everybody is at the bare minimum can still get in this game is to just simply put your block to 54 simple as that now i will say we would also still need that one extra mid-range as well so it's a little bit inconvenient i have to make a couple more revisions when it comes to the build and stuff like that too i currently just dropped my acceleration down one more and then also took the free throw down a little bit to get our block to 54 and our d board to 56 because as you can see that's the badge point right there and then badge point right there this build is much more ideally ran when it comes to the extra core badging the extra badge points for instance with the level 39 of season one or season two there are a couple revisions you just have to make when it comes to making something like this if you're going to be going in the targeting area of getting all four tier threes at the max level when it comes to the defense and still having enough shooting to run all of all three of your tier threes as well so just keep that in mind i will say though something like this is even acceptable as long as you grind to 40 this season you could just get the extra shooting badge core you don't need the 24 at that point because then you can get three tier threes by coring two of them and then anything you spend between tier one and tier two doesn't even matter at that point because you can spend whatever you want between tier one and tier two without without it being restricted like a tier three would be being very minimalistic with this though and assuming that you're not going to be someone that hits level 40 this season or haven't hit level 39 in previous seasons either you would be looking at something like this so with this one we take our free throw all the way down to nearly the minimum about as far as i could go with it without it like pretty much dropping the three pointer off and at that point we didn't really have anything else to put it on because as you can see 67 would be the actual minimum but at that point all we can do is add d board block strength standing dunk post control so oh well we just upped it to 73 we also had to take the stamina down to 93 but i know a lot of you guys 
guys are big low stem fans in the first place because you say there's no point in going above 95 because of gym rat I don't, i'm not a big believer in gym rat working like that but either way as you can see this badge loadout right here that you have would be 28 defense. It would allow you to run all four of the tier threes right here, as long as you core badge one of these Hall of Fames, and then also be able to run all three of the tier threes, even without getting the extra like shooting core badge. And at that point, you could just run bronze poster as your finishing core badge. Simple as that, really. So I apologize if that's a very long drawn out explanation on how the whole badge system works on this, but I just wanted to kind of touch base with anybody in anybody's circumstances. Because as I said, if you have extra badges from the level 39 in season one, season two it's super convenient because you don't have to make any of those revisions on the build you could actually if you want if, if you have both of them just drop off the block and d-board entirely and just put all six extra into your defense and then do whatever you want with the extra points between having more excel more ball handle whatever you would like with that but again just wanted to cover for anybody who isn't going to be planning to get extra core badges or hasn't hit level 39 in any season and at least give you a replica of what you could do to meet all of these thresholds and standards with this but nonetheless this build is way better than this one if you ask me once again just to kind of refresh your brain on this stuff i mean yes we do have the ball handle and excel one higher but let's just go ahead and just put that into speed at that point we get our speed back to 80 and what's the difference i even had free throw at like 85 as well so realistically the only difference between these builds at that point would be then that my prim d is all the way from 79 up to 92 uh, realistically i mean I, at that point we have the mid-range as well we're actually losing out on this driving leg because as you can see the badge point is at 75 so it's unfortunate because then you wouldn't even get the fearless finisher on silver or the acrobat potential on silver we do have like close shot right here but I, let me explain myself on this as well so for instance we would take the close shot down to the next badge point so like this 58 right here as you can see the driving leg does not go high enough to get this extra badge point or anything like that we can take the free throw down but like realistically you're still not looking at another badge point even at 78 so it's just hard to do anything more than 75 with these six threes it's about as simple as that really and then boom again i need to explain to you that we need the 16 finishing for at least the, the silver limitless takeoff so other than that what does this build even have on it besides height and again i'm just not a big fan of the idea of the six threes and even on top of that too the badge count is not good enough on defense i mean you're looking at core badging one of them and then you'll be able to run interceptor for instance but that's eight points and then at that point, you don't have enough to put another tier three on. You can't even run challenger or clamps. So then not only are you dropping the prim D level, but you can't even run the badges in general. So you're dropping all the way from gold, challenger and clamps down to none at all. It's a huge drop off. If you ask me, it's a way worse build on the six foot three. And again, there's no hoopla, no crazy weird stuff, voodoo magic that I'm doing with this. It's literally just that six ones get more attribute caps and more attribute points than a six foot three. So if you're going to be a small guard at the two anyway, you may as well just make a six one in my opinion. There are people who run six, eight shooting guards as well. Maybe I'll talk about that in a different video, but this one's obviously going pretty long. Long story short, if they want to be a six foot eight, you can still have the Hall of Fame quick first step because six eights allow that and you can still run 92 three pointer as well. It's a very hard build to create with good finishing though, because of the finishing badge tiers. You obviously have limitless takeoff poster and slithery in the tier threes. And at that point, your finishing would be very minimalistic and look pretty much like what we just created right here. So, and then you can't even have 99 steel either, which is really the whole point of being this small, like shooting guard build that can play wingy because that hall of fame glove is a problem. So just keep that in mind. I hope I addressed and covered all the bases right here. And if you guys did enjoy, feel free to drop a like sub if you're new to the noties, all good stuff. Like always tries one to 2000 likes. And if you made it to the end of the video, put SG for shooting guard or put shoot in the comments, search approach me all the way through. But anyway, the only one we have left is the power forward video. I will get to that tomorrow. If you guys want to see it, also, feel free to backtrack and check out any of the other ones that we've done for the point guard builds, the small forward in the center as well. And once again, just to clarify, because I don't even think I did a good job at that, I'm showing in all these videos what my team runs, which is the six foot run right here, and then the meta build at the six foot three. So I know I titled it the meta build like and showed a six foot three on the thumbnail, but that's because that truly is what everybody runs. It is the quote unquote meta. I think this build is a big meta breaker though, and it really will push some boundaries when people actually see more of what it's capable of. But for the point guards, I mean, me and AK runs the six foot one anyway, so this is what we showed in general. And then again, I'm showing what my team runs versus the meta build, which is the six foot seven pure lock. So if you guys want to check out any of those builds, feel free to feel free to backtrack a little bit. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed and take it easy, man. Peace.